How many times have you heard this term? Less is more. Less is more. Less is more. Less is more. Less, Less is more. But when you sit down to write a track and don't have many elements, it ends up being boring. I found the key to keeping your music exciting without trying to ram in as many elements as physically possible. So if you want to stop ruining your own music, this video is for you. But first, let me start off with a tip that blew my mind this week. So you know how Ableton Live 11 decided to annoyingly put all of their effects into folders? What? Do you know what? Run the clip. Because the most underrated Ableton plugin. It's a hard one. Do I give it away? <laughs> Ableton stock. Ableton stock. You okay. don't have to, but... Let's, let's go in. Let me, let me take a look. I think this option. Group and... Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I had to show that. I was as shocked as the guys on that video then. Now, back to today's subject. Have you ever been in a position where your track just feels like it's lacking something? You can't put your finger on what? So you're putting more and more elements until it's just completely destroyed. Oh, for sake. Yeah, me too. But how can we make our music better without adding so much that the mix becomes cluttered? muddy or just too much for our tiny little brains to handle. Hmm. I'll start by means of an example. Here's a basic house beat. Oh. Disgusting! Boring, I know. It's not exactly very inspiring and it's definitely not getting my creative juices flowing. So I'm feeling like a challenge. With just 20 minutes on the clock, I have to make this drum loop as interesting as possible, but... I'm only allowed to use what's already here, if it's any good. Okay, so 20 minutes, let's go. So, we've gone from this... ...to this. Nice. And that is point number one. Utilize the existing elements. Before wasting countless hours scrolling through your sample library, ask yourself, what can I do to the existing elements to make them better rather than what extra can I add in to make the track less boring? But don't worry, I will actually show you what changes I've made to the loop in a second. Embrace the space. When a chef creates a new dish, the aim isn't to add in as many elements as physically possible to stop it being bland. It's to carefully select complementary ingredients and elevate each flavour until it becomes a masterpiece. And that's the same for our music. When we have a minimal amount of elements, we create space in the mix, and without filling the space, the song will sound weak. So we need to elevate our ingredients by using creative techniques and effects. Let's take our clap for example. If I had just this bog standard clap, it would only occupy a tiny part of the frequency range and if we don't for one for a better term, thicken it up, our mix will feel empty. So in this example, I've taken our boring clap, layered it with a snare to fill up more of the frequency spectrum and modulated it randomly using sends so that every so often you hear this cool effect. And that brings me on to point number three. Creativity is subtle. Let's dig into the top end. With some simple changes to this shaker, the hats sound more human and natural and they're adding a sense of groove. And played all together, in my opinion, it makes your head start doing a bit of this. And I've done this using simple tools already built into Ableton. With the velocity range of every single hit at minus 50, it means that no two notes are ever the same. And it's the same with the start time. Using an LFO mapped to the start time of the sample, it creates a sense of randomness, similar to a drummer hitting a real hi-hat. With the open hat, I've turned on the LFO and applied half note pitch modulation, moving the sound between two different pitches, giving this kind of TikTok effect. You see, if I turn the LFO off, it 
just adds a lot of interest to our hats. Now you've probably noticed in this video, I haven't used any expensive or fancy plugins. And if you wanna know why, watch this video next.